Hello, welcome to another video. This is an absolute value integral and if you've watched my other video on absolute value integrals, you know how to do this. Otherwise, um, you cannot just go ahead and plug this in and do take the integral just because of these absolute value functions. It means you'll have to see if the boundary conditions are met. And how do you know that? You have to go back and recall the definition of an absolute value function. Remember that if you're given any absolute value, say something like this, what is the absolute value of x? You say that x will always be x if x is positive, if x is greater than or equal to 0, and x will be negative x if x is less than 0. These two conditions will always be there, and that's what you're going to apply to this. So this is going to be just e to the x minus 1 if e to the x minus 1 is greater than or equal to 0. And if it is less than 0, you have to create a second integral for it. And that's the whole idea of absolute value integrals. Okay, let's get into it. The first thing you'll have to do is to write the definition of e to the x minus 1. So we know that the absolute value of e to the x minus 1 is equal to, if we create the conditions, it's e to the x minus 1 if x, sorry, if e to the x minus 1 is greater than or equal to 0, and it would be the negative of it, e to the x minus 1, if e to the x minus 1 is less than 0. So now my job is to choose either of these. I recommend choosing this one. It doesn't matter. Just choose one of the inequalities and solve and find the value of x for which the inequality is true and go find where that x is going to be on the boundary, on the interval that you have to integrate. So here, let's assume we focus on this. So we have um, 4 e to the x minus 1 less than 0 we have e to the x is less than 1. When is e to the x less than 1? You just want to find the values of x that are relevant. So you're going to say, uh, I'm going to take the natural log of both sides. So if I take the natural log of both sides, ln of e to the x is less than natural log of 1. Well, we know that natural log of 1 is 0, and this is going to give us just x. So you're looking for all values, all intervals, where x is less than 0. So if we go here, you can tell that this is less than zero, you keep going up until you get to somewhere here zero. And for that interval, this is the expression you will be integrating. And then anything above that is gonna satisfy the second one. So you go from zero to this part, and this is what you'll be integrating. So this can be translated directly as the integral. This is equal to the integral from the first one is the values of x where the values of x where x is less than zero. Okay, so it's gonna be from negative one because this is the smallest value up to zero somewhere here. So it's from negative one to zero, and we'll be integrating this expression because that's the one that satisfies it. So it will be negative e to the x minus one dx. And then you're gonna add the second part to it, which goes from zero to two which is the integral from 0 to 2 of, now this is what you'll be integrating, e to the x minus 1 dx. Now in your head you might be saying, are they not the same thing? I'm integrating the same function. Yeah, but the intervals are different. You have to note what the intervals are. Now I'm going to move this negative here, so this becomes, if I move the negative here, I can have um, I can actually bring this forward and put this behind, so it's going to be the integral from 0 to 2 of e to the x minus 1 dx. And then this minus sign goes here, it's going to be the integral from negative 1 to 0 of e to the x minus 1 dx. Okay, now we can take our integrals and evaluate, and we get our answer. So this is going to be... Um, if we integrate e to the x, we get e to the x minus x. Evaluated from, let me do this, 
from 0 to 2 minus, we integrate this, is the same thing. So that's the nice thing about this. You're most likely going to get the same answer. So, but you just have different boundaries. So this is e to the x minus x evaluated from negative 1 to 0. Now you have to be very careful while evaluating because of the minus signs. Okay, be careful. So let's start with this. We know that e to the x, so this is going to be e squared. So we have e squared minus, we put 2 here, minus 2. Okay, so put this in here, minus. We evaluate this, this is going to be 2 minus 0. Okay, we're done with that. The next one, we're going to go here. We have e to the 0, which is going to be 1 minus 0 minus this is going to be um, e to the negative 1 which is e to the negative 1 is let's write it like that e to the negative 1 and then if this is negative 1 this becomes plus 1 okay so let's clean up so this is going to be e squared minus 2 where did I get this e squared minus 2 and then e to the 0 come on this is 1 <laughs> okay so this is e squared minus this is going to be e squared minus 3 e squared minus 3 okay minus what do we get here let's still put it here because of the minus sign there's going to be 1 minus e to the 1 minus 1 so that's going to be 1 minus e to the negative 1 minus 1. Well, it looks like 1 minus 1 will cancel out, and what you have will be this minus, we'll change this to a plus, so that our final answer is e squared, let's write the e next, minus e to the, sorry, plus e to the negative 1 minus 3. Okay. And that's it. Never stop learning. Those who stop learning have stopped living. Bye-bye.